Have you ever wondered if you should be sleeping for eight, nine hours once a night? Or if you should be sleeping two hours every so hours and have more than just one sleep? Hello, my successful and healthy earthlings. Mihaela Ragushi, a naturopath and founder of the Natural Health Podcast. Today, I'm going to share with you all things polyphasic sleep. Yes, more than one sleep. That's right. Not two, not, not three. I mean, not one sleep, more than two, three, four, five sleeps you may be having. And they are usually about a shorter period of time. I'm going to talk about what is polyphasic sleep in detail, then the health effects of these types of sleep, and three tips for you to sleep better. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you an opportunity to join a health and success orange community by clicking below and joining the Natural Health Newsletter. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing, business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Absolutely love, 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 and appreciate your support. On Mondays, I'm here to provide you with simple, savvy, and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about polyphasic sleep what an interesting concept right uh what that means is we're gonna let, let's just straight into it. let's go and talk about what is it you're probably sitting there and being like okay cool polyphasic sleep poly means more than two more than one more than two monos one polos many so what is it okay let's get into it so Essentially, it's come about because individuals are trying to hack their productivity. Individuals are trying to hack the concept of time, somehow wanting more time, wanting more hustle, more effectiveness, and to do just more. So people have come up and said, you know what? We're going to do polyphasic sleep, right? So essentially, it's individuals have long sought to optimize their sleep minimizing sleep duration while preserving daytime alertness so essentially many wish to sleep rapidly into a restful sleep that is free of nighttime awakening so since since the role of sleep in memory consolidation and performance was discovered many 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 have looked at improving performance how do you improve in performance or sleep right and some even some people have even seen sleep as a nuisance uh, than a necessity. It's kind of like, oh, we'll sleep when we're dead, or what is the point of sleeping? You've had so many people, you've heard so many people say things like that, right? Uh, so there's been efforts to do so date back in time more than a century, when it was recognized that the deepest sleep occurs in the first hour of sleep. It was suggested that sleep can be broken into multiple short episodes in an attempt to enhance sleep. Isn't that interesting what people are, what we've come up with, that we understand that sleep is important, but how do we enhance sleep? So these individuals came up with polyphasic sleep that we have many bursts of sleep, so-called, for a short period of time, right? Episodes, so kind of like sleep episodes. So therefore, over the past five years, interest in polyphasic sleep has increased with the formation of the Polyphasic Sleep Society and the pop- popularization of the claim by poly- polyphasic sleep advocates to the ability to thrive on as little as two hours of sleep per day. So, so the current concept of polyphasic sleep is kind of like a loose one, right? Uh, the discovery that sleep is a not a unitary process, but rather cycles between REM sleep and non-REM sleep on an average of 80 to 120 minutes, right? Depending on the individual. So they, the polyphasic sleep advocates, so if you're an advocate, please get in touch with me. I absolutely love, love, love to talk to you if you know someone. They recommend diving sleep, dividing sleep into multiple brief episodes disrupted across a 24-hour day. And the aim is to minimize the time spent asleep by restricting sleep duration since since deep slow waves occur in the first hour of each sleep episode. Very, very interesting concept. Hmm. But does it work? That is exactly what I'm going to be talking about today, right? Can you do that? Can you just have one sleep cycle, wake up, have maybe another sleep cycle, and that's about it. So a three hour sleep, depending on the individual. Is that enough for you to function as well as someone who had a monocycle sleep and had maybe eight, nine hours sleep, right? And had many of those cycles. So 
that, that that's the interesting that's the interesting thing about it in and the thing is multiple different polyphasic sleep schedules have been advocated for encompassing a wide variety of sleep patterns for variation in length core sleep and a number of daytime episodes so it's not just uh there's not like a template this is how you do it, it depending on the advocate or depending on the individual uh, the schedules are fundamentally different from our or your mind whoever else's habitual night sleep plus daytime nap or siesta practice in many countries in the world which are taken to increase the amount of sleep obtained so that's an interesting concept right there but the question that i have is okay cool that's amazing i love everything sleep and i love us uh, improving our sleep i love us improving our focus that's why i wanted to look into this a bit more and find out what are the health benefits or health effects of polyphasic sleep let's get straight into that now because this is the juicy part of the episode and i'm so glad you stuck in because you're about to get some juiciness right here right now all right adequate sleep we know is necessary for effective daytime function and optimal health whereas insufficient sleep results in impaired performance and adverse health consequences Adequate sleep can be obtained by various strategies. So historical evidence suggests that prior to the advent of artificial lightning, human sleep may have been split into two or more nighttime sleep episodes, particularly during seasons with a short photo period when the duration of the nighttime darkness far exceeds the time people should be sleeping, right? Interesting. And then there's studies of pre-industrial societies living in regions without large seasonal changes in night length, find that sleep is consolidated at night even when it is dark for 11 to 12 hours. Farmers in hotter climates worked late at night and started early in the morning, thereby shortening their sleep at night, for which they compensated with an afternoon siesta. I mean, hello, my siesta sleepers. <laughs> um, I'm not a farmer, but hey, I have a little garden and sometimes I have a siesta. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, these polyphasic sleep schedules that are advocated by these groups or individuals, they actually claim to improve sleep density and stability, right? And to decrease the overall time period spent asleep for optimal performance. So interesting, that's their oh, moment in a way. So it is to decrease the overall time required to spend asleep, the sleep density and stability. So essentially, they want to get most out of their performance by sleeping less or being in bed less right so essentially they claim that the increased dystentinary wake time available as a result of reduced sleep will result in improved productivity so essentially it's all about improving productivity hmm i always talk about if we want to improve our productivity to sleep and they're saying to you improve your productivity you're gonna sleep less interesting let's find out Let's find out what the study says, right? I had, I had a look at a study, right? So these groups further claim that such schedules will improve you to live longer, improve your memory and mood, and dream more frequently. I mean, that sounds all amazing. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, sign me up. If I can live longer, improve my memory, my mood, and have amazing dreams, right? And sleep less, sign me up. But little do they talk about and this is a study that I came across, uh, which was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was in Nature. Uh, it was, <clears throat> I'll, 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 I'll paste the uh, study link uh, below. But essentially, the study looked at this, right? So it took this in consideration and it came up with a few, in particular, one, two, three, four, five, five things that it spoke about. Number one, by design, polyphasic sleep schedule decreased total sleep time resulting in acute and chronic sleep deficiency, full stop, right? So they identified six studies that specifically compared a polyphasic and biphasic sleep schedule to a consolidated sleep schedule, which is just one sleep, and compared participants following a consolidated sleep schedule with one sleep cycle every 28 hours to a biphasic sleep schedule with sleep cycle every 14 hours. Those following the biphasic sleep schedule reported lower sleep quality, had longer sleep onset latency, more arousals, and spent more time in lighter stages of sleep. They didn't go into the deep stages, which are absolutely necessary for you to remove all those wastes and so many other things. Interesting, so there you go. So, so this study has proven that by doing those sleeps, you are 
acutely or chronically sleep deficient. Number two, no study demonstrated an improvement in memory retention on a polyphasic sleep schedule. So that debunks what they said, right? Monks, so looked at monks following a split sleep schedule with a nocturnal awakening for prayer during the night reported more complaints of memory lapses than controls who follow a consolidated sleep schedule. That's one. That's not a study. Sailors assigned to a schedule of 60 minutes sleep and 160 minutes awake for 40 hours performed worse on word recall tests than sailors who were completely sleep deprived over the 40 hour study interval. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, that's so interesting, right? Number three, there are no controlled studies that support the claimed health benefits of polyphasic sleep. Rather, the limited existing literature currently testing these types of polyphasic sleep schedules demonstrate their adverse health effects. <laughs> so that's interesting, right? So polyphasic sleep schedules deliberately promote sleep restrictions resulting in sleep time and resulting in total sleep time that are typically far less than required for optimal sleep. Polyphasic schedules cause sleep deficiency, sleep at adverse circadian phases, reduce sleep efficiency, sleep interruption and fragmentation, circadian disruption, REM sleep deficiency, and sleep in tear in, in eritium. An extensive body on scientific research consistently demonstrates the adverse consequences of these exposures. No study of polyphasic sleep support the claim of increase in life expectancy. So they're saying uh, by this you're going to have higher life, you're going to live longer. Well, there's no such study at the moment that proves that. And in addition to that, it's just showing that it affects a lot of your sleep things like sleep sufficiency, sleep interruption, fragmentation. Fragmentation is huge if it's affected. Circadian REM disruption, REM sleep deficiency, sleep. Like so many things right there, right? Let's go into number four. Sleep deficiency has repeatedly been shown to diminish multiple aspects of health, safety, and performance. Over time, the homeostatic sleep pressure rises to levels that can result in involuntary transitions to sleep, which may cause errors and accidents. So this is saying that if you are not sleeping like you're supposed to, all of a sudden you may fall asleep, you may have accidents. I mean, let's think about all the big accidents that have occurred in the world. Hmm. Most of them have been linked to individuals who are sleep deprived. Crazy, right? I think it was uh, the big blow up of the radioactive thing in the 1980s in Ukraine, Sh Sh Shabal, Shambol, whatever it's called. So bad at memorizing these things, but I know exactly what happened. I wasn't there, but I know what happened. <laughs> um, yeah, so I believe that that was due to a sleep incident, an individual making an error. There's so many other ones. There's a whole website that talks about, I remember reading it, there was a whole website that talks about sleep errors in the world. That have occurred so jump on that check it out and you'll be like wow and this is saying that because of the homeostatic sleep pressure that rises involuntary you may make errors sleep on a polyphasic schedule also results in sleep outside of the temporal windows of increased sleep propensity driven by the circadian clock such sleep is lower quality fragmented and more difficult to initiate this is interesting. Circadian misalignment has been associated with adverse effects on metabolism. So if you're wanting a good metabolism, in addition to that, it's cardiovascular system if you're wanting to look after your heart. Mood if you're wanting to be in a good mood. And decision making and increased risk of cancer. Now that is absolutely crazy, right? So essentially everything that, that's, uh, that they're talking about, that the polyphasic sleep society said they said that you live longer improve your memory and mood and dream more frequently that's been debunked by this study um and it's looked into it and it's saying it's actually not good for you so there's a reason why when we look at it there's a reason why we need to go through all the stages of sleep not just the first stage not just the second stage you need to go and not just the last stages you need to go through all the stages at any given time because all the stages are important for something just because we are trying to isolate a sleep stage and do more of that is that the right thing this is the questions you need to ask yourself is that the right thing or should we just sleep like we're supposed to sleep just i don't know seven eight nine hours depending on the individual um and and sleep and sleep and not be disrupted not 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 wake up with an alarm clock not wake up in a frantic not uh you know like 
I always say to reset your circadian rhythm, to reset your sleep, to know exactly what your sleep's like. Go camping, go outside, fall asleep when the sun sets and wake up when the sun rises for a week and you'll know what your sleep schedule's like. So that's interesting. So let's look at three tips to sleep better. I mean, I already gave you one, uh, but let's give you three more as a bonus, right? Number one is stay away from polyphasic sleep. Stay away from anything poly. <laughs> there, there you go. So polyphasic sleep, stay away from it because it's not really benefiting you from, as we've seen in the study, and as we know, I know so much about sleep and the more I read about it, the more I know exactly why we need to lay there for seven, eight, nine hours a night and allow our body to do what it's supposed to do, right? Number two, schedule and regularity. Make sure you schedule your sleep and make sure it's regular because our body loves regular things. It loves the schedule, right? And the other one is sleep at least eight hours a day because I've given you so much evidence of individuals who sleep less than six hours, the huge rises of diseases, mortality, and so forth. So make sure you're sleeping at least for eight hours. So there you have it. I hope I answered the question in regards to is polyphasic sleep for you? Uh, and hopefully you've made up decision if it is for you. And you know what? If you've tried it, let me know, how did you go? I'm a bit scared to try it because I think I'll be like the grumpiest person ever. Whoever's around me, oh my gosh, good luck to them because if I don't get my sleep, I'm grumpy bumpy. Um, so if you've tried it or if you've had success, I want to know. I want to know what success you've had. I want to know if you guys have any studies that go against this. Please let me know. I want to know all about it. But there you have it, a little bit about polyphasic sleep, a little bit more about sleep in itself. And, and if you want to join a success and health oriented community, click below, join the natural health newsletter. Every Friday, bonus and specials sent straight to your inbox right there for you to view. And only bonuses and only specials are available in the newsletter, nowhere else. So there you have it. Remember, the missing link between failure and success is your health. Content and information provided here is the opinion of Mahela Raguse and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguse does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstances, Circumstances shall the natural podcast, Mahela Raguse, any guests or contributors to the natural podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguse be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the natural podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet, lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the natural podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguz nor the publisher of this context takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in the educational content.